You're looking for something more than just tarantulas? Here's five alternative inverts that I recommend getting into if you're looking for something different. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. Yes, we all love our tarantulas. I absolutely adore mine. I love watching them, feeding them, and pretty much just everything in general about them. I find them absolutely fascinating. But I also find other creatures fascinating as well. Over the years, I've kept many different invertebrates that I've been curious about. Some of them I absolutely love and will continue to keep. And then there's those that just kind of didn't work out. I got them and then I found something about them that I either didn't like or something that might have been problematic and I just won't keep them anymore. I've kind of worked them out of my system. And then there's those that I consider to be heartbreakers, and those are the ones that have very short lifespans. Um, I will keep one or two of those particular species just because I really like them, but I won't actively seek them out because of their short lifespan. So if someone gives me one, or if I happen to come across one, I'll keep it. But other than that, I'm not going to go out and really buy one and, and, and chase them down or anything like that. And then there's those that I just really don't have any interest in whatsoever. For example, centipedes. I don't keep any centipedes because I don't find them all that fascinating. They are fascinating to watch when I watch them on video and so on, but for the most part as a pet, they spend their time burrowed and that to me is not all that exciting and I really don't wanna keep something like that. Now, maybe if I had one, I might change my mind, but as of now, I'm not actively seeking them out and I don't foresee myself doing that in the future either. So in this video, I've made a list of five of my favorite invertebrates that I like to keep and I think you might be interested in too. So starting off with number five, I have scorpions. Nothing says creepy crawly like a huge black scorpion crawling around on your hand. I put scorpions at number five, however, because they're not for everyone. Scorpions are cool and entertaining, but they can also be pretty reclusive. Many of them are nocturnal, so you most likely won't see them much unless you spend time observing them at night or in the early morning. There are many species readily available in the hobby, ranging from mildly venomous to downright deadly. Here's some pros as to why keeping scorpions might be right for you. Many desert species are very active at night and can be seen actively hunting or digging burrows in the sand. Some species like the emperor scorpion or the many species of Asian forest scorpion grow to impressive sizes and are very handleable if you know how. Most species with the right husbandry can be very hardy and have fairly long lifespans ranging from 6 to 10 years. There are some species that are parthenogenetic and can live on indefinitely by reproducing asexually. Some species can live communally. Scorpions fluoresce under a black light. Many of the most impressive species are very inexpensive. And as always, there are some cons. Care must always be taken with young children. Scorpion venom, even that considered mild, can have severe symptoms on young children. Reportedly, there are only about 25 species of scorpion that are considered lethal to humans. However, many of those deaths are usually young children, the elderly, and adults with health complications. Scorpions account for approximately 3,000 deaths a year worldwide. 
Scorpions can sometimes be finicky eaters preferring to capture and eat their prey in secret rather than on demand. Most are nocturnal and can be difficult to observe. They are not recommended for young children. So I do keep scorpions and I do get some enjoyment out of them, but they are not my absolute favorite. So that's why I put them at number five on my list. Coming in at number four are tailless whip scorpions. Do you want the cool, creepy, crawly ick factor without any of the fear of getting bitten or stung? Tailless whip scorpions may be for you. There are numerous species of tailless whip scorpions available in the hobby, although they are not as readily available as other invertebrates. Lately, however, I've been seeing more and more of them for sale at reptile shows and online. Tailless whip scorpions, also referred to as cave spiders, belong to a class of arachnids known as amblypigids. They are nocturnal and can be observed at night and be found hiding during the day. Here are some pros for keeping tailless whip scorpions. They are super creepy but harmless. They're very easy to care for. They have a cool hunting method that involves them using their whips to guide their prey closer to them before pouncing on them with their pointy claws. Whip scorpions come in many sizes ranging from tiny species to giants with 10 inch leg spans. Many whip scorpions are hardy, have long lifespans around 8 to 10 years or more. They don't require tons of ventilation, I keep their enclosure humid, and I feed mine once a week just like my tarantulas. And here are some cons for keeping tailless whip scorpions. They are nocturnal and reclusive, so observing them can be difficult. They can be very finicky eaters. Sometimes mine take meals readily, especially after a molt. Other times they don't touch their food and will fast for long periods of time. They are also very fragile. They have very thin, spindly legs with delicate whips. While falling may not be much of a hazard, care has to be taken when taking out or putting them back into their enclosures. Those thin legs and whips can easily be caught in a lid or crushed under a cork bark, etc. There isn't much information available about them. Many species are commonly sold as tailless whip scorpion without mention of what species it is. With so many similar species, it can be very difficult to identify what specific species you have. I've always enjoyed my tailless whip scorpions, even though they are reclusive and I don't see them much, only when I pull them out and I look at them at feeding time and so on, I still get a lot of enjoyment with, from them because they're just so creepy and cool looking. And I love to have them walk on my hand and pull them out. You don't have to worry about them stinging or biting you. They might maybe give you a little pinch, but it's very unlikely that they'll do that. But watching them feed is super fascinating because they are super quick when it comes to feeding or trying to escape. And uh, it's just neat to watch them use their little whips to bring food closer and then watch them pounce and get them with their claws. So they're very fun as far as I'm concerned. So coming in at number three are Blue Death Feigning Beetles.
I've only recently gotten into these beetles, but it didn't take me long to fall in love with them. This species of beetle is hardy and long-lived, and they are just a joy to watch as they bumble around in search of food or mates. To me, their derpiness is endearing and their feigning death is just a hilarious defense mechanism. It reminds me of the feigning goats that also cracked me up. They're just super cute, harmless, and don't have any noxious defense mechanisms like other types of beetles. Some pros for keeping feigning death beetles. They are hardy and can live upwards of eight years or more with proper care. They're easy to care for. Feed them beetle jelly or veggies like carrots and some high protein foods like bits of dog food, fish flakes, freeze dried mini shrimp, and even freshly killed insect carcasses. They're very entertaining and active most of the time. They are readily available and inexpensive, usually around $15 per beetle. And they make excellent pets for children. And some cons. Specimens are wild caught, so there's no telling the age of the beetle that you have. They're difficult to breed in captivity. They will breed, but the care process from larva to adult can be pretty involved. Sometimes specimens may have missing legs or antenna, which they will not regenerate as they are adults. Ever since I've got my feigning death beetles, I just enjoy them so much because they're always out, especially in, at, in the evening, they're looking for food and feeding them is just fun. And just watching their overall interactions, how they kind of just bumble all over each other and they fall and they roll and they feign death and they're just so cute to watch. So I really, really enjoy blue feigning death beetles. And while we're on the subject of feigning death beetles, here's a little something extra that I thought you might enjoy and you may have never heard of before. They're very similar to feigning death beetles as far as their actions are concerned, but they are on a tiny, tiny micro scale. Check out these shiny spider beetles. I bought these as a novelty at a Repticon from Exotics Kingdom. I'd never seen or heard of them before, so I was very curious. I was amazed at how on first glance they look like tiny spiders, but on close inspection, they are tiny beetles. They act just like feigning death beetles. Yes, even feigning death when you mess with them. You can keep them in dry oatmeal as bedding and give them pieces of carrot or other veggies as well as a piece of dog food or other protein for them to eat. It's cool to watch them swarm over a piece of carrot and they'll devour it very quickly. They're considered a household pest and can infest your dry goods if you let them escape, but fortunately they can't climb smooth surfaces, so escape is not a big concern. Lifespan is also not a big concern with these little guys as you can keep them going as long as you take care of them and they will reproduce indefinitely. Had you ever heard of shiny spider beetles? I never have, but I find them very enjoyable even though they are tiny, tiny little things and I keep them inside of a little box, but they are reproducing and they're just fun to watch. Coming in at number two, jumping spiders.
There are many different species of jumping spiders available in the hobby, but none have captured my heart like the regal jumping spider. These inquisitive little spiders display an alertness and dare I say intelligence about them that is captivating. With creators such as Tarantula Cat, Snake Discovery, and Reptiliatus to name a few, giving a spotlight to these extremely cute spiders, people have been buying these little guys up as fast as they can get them. I balked at buying them many years ago when they were selling for around $25 each, but with increased demand, you can expect to pay upwards of $40 to $50 for one today. They're well worth it, and believe it or not, there is an actual culture growing around keeping these creatures, with keepers decorating their enclosures in the most imaginative ways. Here's some pros for keeping jumping spiders. They're easy to keep with consistent maintenance. Watering and feeding must be consistent. They can't be neglected or they will perish. They're docile and handleable to an extent. They can bite, but their bite is completely harmless, usually resulting in a little sting and some swelling. They're cute and fun to interact with. Feeding is always exciting. They're easy to breed and can lead to keeping many more specimens. There are different color morphs available. It's fun to provide them with a cute decorative enclosure, and they are great pets for children. And some cons. They're somewhat expensive for a true spider, They have very short lifespans, one to two years at most. I consider them to be heartbreakers. Buy a young specimen so you can keep it longer. Many are wild caught, but breeding has become more common. So jumping spiders are in that category that I would call heartbreakers, but I still keep them um, because they are just so cute and adorable. Uh, I just enjoy interacting with them, feeding them and so on. They just seem to have an intelligence about them, so I just can't help it. Um, even though they only live for one or two years. I did pay for Pumpkin, which is my recent one. I paid $45 for her, which I never would imagine I would pay for a jumping spider, but she's been well worth it and I've gotten lots and lots of enjoyment out of her. But I will no longer be buying any more jumping spiders. I recently found out just this past week um, that my mother-in-law's property where I go fishing um, around the lake, there are tons of regal jumping spiders. They make their little egg sacs on the stalks of grass that are out there around the lake. And within each, each and every single egg sac, there's a mama spider guarding it. So I found out I have an unlimited supply of jumping spiders and I just discovered where they are. So um, I think that's a pretty cool thing. Not that I'm going to get into the jumping spider business, but it's cool to know that I can just go out there and get one anytime I want. And if I feel like I want to release it, I'll just release it right back there. So what is in my number one spot? If you follow me and you watch my videos, you probably already know what it's going to be, and that is isopods. My number one spot had to go to isopods. There are so many colors, sizes, and varieties to choose from that you can't get bored with them. I never thought that I would get into isopods like I have, but I've become obsessed. They're easy to care for with consistent maintenance, and they are fun and rewarding to keep. 
I get a feeling of accomplishment when I buy a small colony of 10 isopods and it turns into hundreds. Lifespan isn't really an issue when they constantly reproduce to the point that you may have to give some away or start selling them. I love watching them eat and interact with each other. Feeding is easy. I feed mine Rapashi Morning Wood and Rapashi Bug Burger. Freeze-dried minnows for protein, bee pollen, carrots, and bits of squash. My only regret is I don't have enough space to keep as many species as I would like to collect. Here are the pros for keeping isopods. Lots of varieties to choose from. Prices can range from very inexpensive, like $10 for a small colony, to very expensive, over $300 for maybe six isopods. They're easy to care for with consistent maintenance. They can do with a little neglect, but not for long. Some species are better than others when it comes to this. They're easy to breed. With good care, they can thrive and reproduce like crazy. They're fun and rewarding. Their interactions are comical, and when they thrive, you feel good about it. You can make a little bit of extra money by selling rarer species if you're good at keeping and breeding them. and they are excellent pets for children. And of course, the cons. There are too many species to choose from. You'll want to keep them all. You can be overrun with certain species. If you don't have a way of getting rid of the excess, either by giving away or selling, you'll be forced to either make new bins for the overage or destroy the excess by freezing. It's illegal to release them into the wild unless they are local species. Yes, I love isopods. I never thought that I would say that, but to me, they're just fun and rewarding. I can't get over how many different species of isopods they are, and they're all different, and they come in all varieties of colors. And of course, you have different price ranges. So if you want to get into them, you know, just to start out, you can just choose an inexpensive species and see how you do with them, and then progress into more difficult ones. And that's exactly how I did it. I started out with some of the more common varieties. I think I spent 10 bucks for 10 of them, a dollar a piece, right? So then you end up with hundreds of them. Um, and then as I got better at keeping them and learned more and more, um, I started getting into the more expensive ones. In fact, my wife bought them for me because I was really balking at the price, but she did it and I don't regret it because they did well for me. So, you know, it just depends on your experience and there's tons and tons of information out there for them. So um, you can, really can't go wrong with them unless you just absolutely neglect them. I still get people that say, I don't get it. They're just roly polies. They're these little bugs. How do you find any enjoyment out of them? But you just have to keep them and, and interact with them and just watch them. They're just a lot of fun. I Sometimes I'll just pull out a bin, open it, put some food in there and watch them do their thing. And I just get enjoyment at it. It's very relaxing for me.
So I hope you enjoyed my list of five alternative inverts that you can get into. These are my favorite ones that I keep. And if you have something that was not on the list and you think I should have on my list, leave a comment down below as to what you keep and why you think they're so fascinating and why I might find them fascinating as well. Maybe you can convince me to keep a centipede. So that wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas and all those other inverts you keep.